Jane Addams, presentation by Alicia Griggs and Adrian Brookstein. Jane Addams was a feminist, a peace activist, a public philosopher, and a pioneer social worker in America. She helped reshape America and was one of the most prominent reformers of the progressive era. She was most widely known for founding the first settlement in the United States, Chicago's Whole House. Jane Addams, an American woman, was born in Cedarville, Illinois on September 6, 1860. She grew up in an upper middle class family. Jane suffered from a spinal defect and because of this, she was considered disabled and sickly throughout her life. At the age of two, Jane lost her mother to tuberculosis. Addams' father was a Rockford University trustee. Thanks to her father, she was able to become literate and very well educated. She was accepted into Rockford Female Seminary and graduated in 1881 as the valedictorian of her class. Before Jane arrived, Rockford had originally been considered a finishing school where young women studied things to make them better housewives in the future. The curriculum changed when Adams arrived, and she studied more advanced topics such as math, philosophy, science, Latin, and Greek. In her valedictorian speech, Jane left her mark with the quote, We stand today united in a belief in beauty, genius, and courage, and that these can transform the world. Years after Jane Addams graduated college, she visited a settlement house in Toynbee Hall. This visit gave Addams the inspiration to open a settlement house in Chicago's unprivileged area. In 1889, Jane Addams and her friend Ellen G. Starr leased a home that was then built by Charles Hull. Addams had her own funds and paid for the whole house out of her pocket. The two women moved into this house and went forward on this endeavor to provide better civic and social conditions for people of Chicago. The following presentation was produced by Amanda Forsyth and further explains how the whole house bettered our society. House provided a nursery and kindergarten for young children, lessons in cooking and sewing for young girls, and a club for teenage boys in an attempt to prevent the formation of tenement gangs. There, Adams gave book readings and slideshows on art. She also invited speakers such as John Dewey, Susan B. Anthony, and Clarence Darrow to give public lectures to working class people. By its second year in operation, the Chicago Whole House was a home to over 2,000 people every week. Adams and Starr advocated their cause to various people and raised money to support this ongoing foundation they had created. The money helped fund kindergarten classes, clubs, and night school for adults. The first facility added to the whole house was an art gallery, which was followed by a second kitchen, a coffee house, a gym, and a swimming pool. In 1905, Adams was appointed to Chicago's BOE. In the following years to come, she participated in the founding of the Chicago School of Civics and Philanthropy. Moreover, she became the first woman president of the National Conference of Charities and Corrections. She personally led several investigations in her own area of Chicago. She also worked as a garbage inspector for the 19th Ward, which helped her receive the first honorary degree ever awarded to a woman by Yale University. She was also a strong advocate for women's rights. Before women's suffrage, Adams believed that women should be heard in legislation and deserve the right to vote. Most importantly, she was one of the founders of the National Women's Suffrage Association, which still exists today. In addition, she fought for the rights of children, peace, eradication of racism, and other reform movements. She also worked for the passage of laws to protect women and children, along with state and national child labor laws. Adams also helped pass laws against capital punishment, especially for minors. Moreover, Adams was a peace activist. She believed that peace was not defined by an absence of war, but as the unfolding of worldwide processes of war. When the U.S. entered World War I, Jane spoke strongly against this. Her beliefs led her to found the Women's Peace Party, or the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. Adams worked with Herbert Hoover, who helped provide food and other necessities to women and children of the so-called enemy at the time. All of Jane's actions awarded her with the Nobel Peace Prize in 1931, which she co-shared with Nicholas Murray Butler. Shortly after, Jane's weakness from a heart
heart attack five years later eventually caught up with her.